Beelsisters friends, and welcome to episode six now, I believe, six. of the uh, Bielsa Bible with Rob Mulholland and Mickey Peeker. I was wondering about this. Do you reckon there's people who listen to the audio of this who think we're the other one because we say each other's names at yeah, the start? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm Rob. If you're yeah. listening to this, and I'm Mickey. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, you're losing out there, really. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to uh, t- to you. Just letting you know, uh, just to stop the confusion. Yeah. But uh, uh, thanks loads for your correspondence. We yeah. uh, we said that last time, but it's getting more and more and more. So that's brilliant. Yeah, we'll have a little look at some of that in a minute. We will. And I've and you've just taught me how to look at comments on YouTube. <laughs> I, I, you literally, I'm like a granny. I know it is insane. I'm so bad with technology. Like, uh, yeah, a phrase that Mickey said the other day was, "Sometimes I download apps and I don't know where they go." <laughs> download i've downloaded stuff hundreds of times and not know where it i don't know, know where it goes i get these like panicked texts yeah, and phone where, calls so it's like i, I, th- I press the button and where's it gone where. so <laughs> yeah i've just taught him how to look at the youtube comments and he's absolutely delighted i've so just we're gonna... read a few so thanks so much yeah in fact should we just do that first so we do the correspondence first yeah, let's, well, let's mix it up a bit let's, let's dive into the post bag we're mavericks So we're going to make this a regular feature now because we want to get you more involved. We absolutely love uh, all your comments because... Uh, it's about a community. That's what we're trying to build. We keep saying exactly. that. It's a religion. Let's build the community, build the religion, take over the world. Exactly. And your comments are great. Like, they proper make me laugh, some of them. Like, this one made me absolute howl from John H. on YouTube. Yeah. Because um, we were talking last week about the Man City game, obviously, and Pep Guardiola and whatnot. And uh, John put, hearing City fans complain about not having a striker is like hearing Jeff Bezos complain he hasn't got a shopping trolley. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely 10 out of 10 john we really enjoyed that Jeff and it bozo is, yeah it is absolutely fair as yeah. well we I were trying to got, be kind he's got 250 billion yeah. I, I, saw, I saw like a tweet so i was like what is he saving up for <laughs> it's so good isn't it's it? insane you it? could literally end you could end the global south oh would, you, you could know, just do whatever oh, like, uh, but no he's uh he's obviously saving up for something he's like he's like um he's like one of them dragons from like lord of the rings he's like smaug isn't he? he's just got this big pile of gold that keeps accumulating but anyway i have uh I've, I've no time for uh i don't even think there's enough money that would cover what he's what he's got it's there isn't actually enough physical money yeah no if you try Genuinely. to take that out of an atm it's not yeah. having that is it <laughs> Try to withdraw like three trillion dollars. <laughs> oh no, long it would take. Months. It, yeah, months. It would be months. That bit where he goes, just <laughs> <laughs> doing that for weeks. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah we really enjoyed that one john that was absolutely great and we received an email that um i absolutely loved and i definitely should have got ready uh before i uh oh uh, well the you know it's the, we, with the last the last one was about preparation so it was it was can... about preparation and attention to detail so ooh. so um by the magic of entertainment editing i have found the email here it comes from and i apologize in advance for the pronunciation of this norwegian name it is from i'm gonna go with hulia top hulia top i'm gonna go with holes thorpe Holge yeah, Thorpe is going Thorpe. I think it's probably... It's a, in North Yorkshire somewhere. Yeah, I'm Holge Thorpe. No, uh, Hol- Hulia Thorpe. I'm not, it's what? got stuff that we can't do yeah. in terms of like, like we can't do the... <sighs> unless we're a scouser, of course. It's like, got that O with a line through. So yeah, I don't know why you say that. stuff that we can't do. Anyway, yeah. thank you very much for your message. We really enjoyed it. Um, so the uh, message says, Hi, I am too young to remember much from the Wilkinson era. Maybe you lads are Look as well. at you. Yeah, maybe you lads are... No, I'm not, actually. Yeah, I know. Like That is very generous. Um, But I bet you have more insight being from Leeds than I can provide. The legend that is called Bielsa caught me totally off guard. I've always been a devoted fan, but the last two years have risen my fanatic support to new heights. New heights I never thought existed. So just to try and educate myself, sometimes I wonder what kind of phenomenon I'm up against. I can honestly say I've never had as much fun as a Leeds fan as right now. I realise there is probably several powerful aspects to this feeling that is Leeds in the Anno 2020. Lovely little biblical touch calling it Anno. Uh, Don't know what that means. It's just like an old timey way of saying the year of. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, The combination of off and on pitch revolution, promotion, kick-ass football with our recent history fresh in mind is all consuming. But this we all know. What I wonder, basically, is were there, at the time, in the Wilkinson period, at this point in his tenure, the same ecstatic feeling? I realise there are many similarities, promotion, a good start in Division 1 or the Premier League now. At the same time, I realise there are some differences. The kick-ass football, Bielsa versus Wilkinson as a person. I was wondering if you could help me understand what went through Leeds fans' heads during Wilkinson's team on the way up compared to Bielsa's team on the way up. Love the podcast, MOT. 
fan from Norway. Thank you for signing off like that so I didn't have to try and pronounce your name again. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to send us a video, mate, um, please do with a pronunciation of your name. And that was an amazing email. I've not heard that. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, the first bit you said, I want to just focus on that a little bit. Mm. Um, heights that you didn't know existed mm. is something that I relate to as well. I, I, I've never supported a football team like I support this football team. Mm. And it sounds weird to say that, but I didn't realise how how involved emotionally yeah. you could be. And that's coming from someone who is, uh, my life is football and always has been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I literally- An absolute obsessive. Yeah, football taught me how to read. I, I, I didn't Not read. very well. No, no. <laughs> it, it did, when I couldn't read the football scores, that was when I started learning how to read because yeah. that, I, it, it is everything to me. And, and, and how involved we are now as a fan base, it, there's nothing, nothing, Yeah. there's no parallel. I can't draw any, any other conclusion. This is a one-off. Yeah. And, and we're trying, that's why we do this podcast, trying to appreciate him. Yeah, I totally, I know what you mean. Cause obviously there was the same, obviously there's the same joy of uh, victory and the same joy of the resurrection from coming back out of the second division. And, you know, I don't mean to belittle history ever because that's a hugely important, amazing time in Leeds' history. Howard Wilkinson is a man I will always love to death, respect him forever. But there is the difference of the style in which we've done it. And like, you know, like Wilkinson's team was a more traditional, dirty, dirty Leeds team. You know, there was a lot of hard guys. We played tough, physical football. It wasn't uh, Bielsa ball. It wasn't this, you know, there wasn't the same there sort were, of... There were, there were some great players. I know oh, incredible mean, like, players. I, like... I, again, don't mean to belittle any of them. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, but... we, had, we had Vinnie Jones going up in that promotion pro season. Yeah, we had David Batty, who was always a hard mm. man. Uh, but there's some amazing tack attacking sure, prowess yeah, as well. Yeah. But, but the, the difference between Bielsa's leads and any other leads and i think any other club um is is that it's not about the results mm. there's some there's another level there's a new depth and i think the world's become so divided and has changed quite a lot really in the last 30 years and we've got into this kind of insular everyone hated each other people being distanced the social media and and, and whatnot and the rich getting richer etc and everyone else suffering in in, in some ways particularly economically as well now that bielsa seems to stand against all this division and mm. and offers a new way of thinking and 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 it's so refreshing yeah and I, I i'm just jumping into this headlong because it's going to end at some point yeah. and i know that we'll never get this feeling back again and football can be amazing and and victories are amazing but there's something that just keeps it's all the time yeah. It's, it's like finding when people say they found god it's like it's a party 24 7 man it's like it's, uh, it's an american as well i think but it, it, this feels like i'm so involved in this in this team in this in this i, I just I, I can't put it into words no, I, I think I, you I, have done beautifully there actually i think that was a really beautiful way of putting yeah it. so for me it doesn't compare nothing mm. compares to I, you i, I think i think i think the same because <laughs> i i am um a little too young to really remember the um wilkinson era me too to be fair yeah. I, I, I was i we was 10 on the years terraces old or anything. Yeah, yeah i was 10 when we won it i don't remember the promotion season i remember mm. the first season we finished fourth i remember the vi you know the victorious yeah. 91 92 season but being it being a 10 11 year old you don't appreciate as much as you should you think that's just what Leeds United do when yeah stuff, I, I wasn't like... I wasn't going to the ground then I, di I didn't have my my dad had a Leeds season ticket in the mm. 80s actually but he's not a big football man and he never took me I started going in my early teens because mm. my next door neighbor used to take me uh, in fact, my first got uh, my first ever game at Ellen Road was uh, we beat Man United four one in a oh, youth a cup start. in the youth cup final, yeah. and Jamie Forrester got, scored an overhead kick. Yeah, no, I know the game you're talking about. Yeah, really, a really great introduction to Ellen Road, but. I can't, I'm sure there's other Leeds fans we can get in touch with that are a bit older that, that could compare better than we could. Sure. But I remember doing it a little, just to just to end this, a little um, interview in, uh, with, with BBC Leeds in the pub. In, it was uh, Streets of Leeds, I think. Mm. And we were doing a talk on Bielsa and whatnot and, and Leeds United. And a bloke came up and he, was in his, and he remembered the, you know, 70s, the, the Rev yeah, era yeah. when we were at the greatest ever Leeds team. Yeah, yeah. And he said, "Not it, it's never been like this. Mm. He said, this is different. This Bielsa is even different to the Revy era. Yeah. I think you've got the Revy era, you've got the Wilkinson era. Got and the then you've got the era. Yeah, the O'Leary era was, was really exciting. Yeah. But, but it didn't have this. You know, it, uh, the O'Leary era, this, it, it was so disappointing in the end because mm. O'Leary wrote that book. It all went wrong. People fell out with each yes. other. And then the club nearly folded. It was disappointing in a different way. It wasn't like a um, when like our first season of Bielsa at Leeds. That failure was beautiful. Oh, 
romantic. It was romantic. Whereas the failure of the Revy, not the Revy era, sorry, the failure of the, the Revy era, I'm not calling that a failure. No, the failure of the, oh, no, it was very successful. The failure of Some the, Man United fans are calling it a failure, but it's <laughs> not good enough. But the failure of the O'Leary, uh, O'Leary era was so disappointing because it came crashing down in such an ugly way. And it was, um, you know, it, it was tainted in a lot of ways. There was a lot of stains on it and it wasn't... Yeah, and know, I think when we started buying players um for stupid money that mm. weren't the homegrown players that, that was a great thing about that o'leary team that's got draws some parallels with bielsa was that yeah we had such a good little academy coming through mm. and that that feels special yeah. to me as well I, it I, started off feeling beautiful mm. but yeah it became so ugly so um in, in, in answer nothing compares to this yeah i, I think I totally and let's agree enjoy with that. it as much as we can bl sisters and and uh, i'm sure that the, the bl sisters around the world as well from other clubs what the interviews we've been doing and the feedback we've had is this is special for them yeah it is and like because i think like leeds have got a really special connection with bielsa that you know the, the few like core of the bielsa teams have and we're really connecting with them over that and it's beautiful so yeah thank you so much for your email that was a really great one if you want to email in um please do it's bielsa bible at gmail.com send us a message on there whatever you want to talk about and uh, we're going to just read some of them out and discuss them as we have done so please do get in touch we really enjoy reading those thank you very much <laughs> So, the international break, Rob, what a terrible international break it's been because <sighs> Leeds United's Marcelo Bielsa are not playing yeah, football. I, you know, it's, it's Leeds United's Marcelo Bielsa are not playing football. <laughs> what, All the way around. Articulate way of putting it. But yeah, it's so articulate in the last bit as well. <laughs> well I don't struggle for words, mate. <laughs> it, it, it's so frustrating. This, why, I don't understand why it's happening now. I know. It's such a stupid timing. Like the leagues mm. just get going. You, you're a few weeks in, you're just starting to build momentum. Crazy. And then it's whipped away to go play, you know, for in, Strange year. in Europe, we're just playing meaningless friendlies. And, and this, with the uh, COVID thing as well, mm. I know that New Zealand have just dropped out and now we're going to replace them with a the friendly. Just don't play international friendlies. It yeah. feels like a risk. Yeah, it does. Oh, everything's a risk. So so, so manage it and, and, and minimise it. Mm. We don't need to play friendlies. If we're going to keep the UEFA yes. competition going, the Nations League, fair enough. But why bother with the friendlies? I know. I mean, it's not like Gal Southgate learns anything. No, it? I it know. Just go, it just goes, oh, let's go with defensive. Yeah. Right, right, fair we, enough. We've got seven right backs and we're going to do a train from corners. Yeah, That's but, the whole thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. We did, we did play three right backs, yeah. but, to, but to chat about one particular player playing for England at the moment, who is who is uh, we're recording this on Wednesday night, by the way. So yeah. there's a, there's an England game. He's currently is he playing right as we speak? I think it's later on. <laughs> right, but yeah. Calvin, our Calvin is is now becoming an integral part of, of Gareth Southgate's starting eleven. Yeah, he lo looks like it. He's really part of the plan. I mean, just he? wow. I mean, he's and he's been really good. He made the most tackles on the pitch when mm. he when it, on his debut. We think he made more than the entire England team put together. Yeah, and, but he's not been used. In, in, in the, the way that Bielsa uses him, he's too far forward. Yes, which is Calvin Phillips has played there in the past for Leeds, and we've never well, quite he started got... out as an attacking box to box midfielder, the, the Lee Boyer type player. Yeah, and nobody rated him. Yeah, yeah. and we've got to we've got to we've got to mention Marcelo when we mention Calvin because he's transformed his mm. his career and his life totally. And he's just giving it like uh, you've seen a couple of the things Bielsa has done to Calvin Phillips that have transformed him. Like the way that Calvin Phillips now, when he receives the ball, he always always receives it with an open body shape, looking to pass forwards. Always, when you watch him receive the ball, he's always in that shape, which helps him just get that little split second qu quicker. And because in the Bielsa system, you know where people are going to be as well. When he gets that ball, he knows he can look up and see the front five in their position and he'll see the two fullbacks hairing past him so it's so in I've, a way I've, sad watching him for england get the yeah. ball like that turn look up see no one and just have to pass it back he to where it died sideways yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or back and, it, and let's talk about on the ball as well with his passing range mm. he's, it, he's one of the best in the country at oh, pinging, a, at pinging a 50 yard pass ahead height just whoosh, and it, outstanding but for me off the ball is where Calvin Phillips is so impressive. He's incredible. His he movement, is, his work rate. Oh God, he's so good at it. He just he cut he narrows down four or five different angles, yeah. and you can see if a player you know hesitates, then sometimes the the attack is lost. Yeah, yeah. you get back up because Leeds are so quick at recovering. Exactly, and Calvin slows down play so well and and cuts out angles, interceptions, and is one on one tackling. You know. It's right up there with anyone. And so, it's, you know, it's beautiful to see him play for England. I just yeah. hope he gets to play how he can. I think there's a few players that are the, uh, 
you could call a Marcelo Bielsa project. Mm. And, and Calvin's right up there. Klitsch is the other one as yeah, well. Stuart Dallas. Stuart Dallas is Luke the other Ayling. one. I think he'd made a promise, didn't he, that when he first came to Leeds, he said to the hierarchy at Leeds, I can make Calvin Phillips, Stuart Dallas, and I don't think it was Klitsch, actually. It was, it was Maybe Ayling. Cause he, he did. Luke Ayling, the best yeah. players in the division. Yeah. And he, he did. Yeah, and Klitsch has come out of nowhere. Yeah. We, we, we did chat about Klitsch with... Um, with a, with He's an been away with Poland. So. Yeah, and uh, we've more to come on, Klitsch, but he was, uh, he, he's been outstanding for us as well. He has. But um, there have been some actual games involving Bielsa teams. It's the national teams, obviously, this week. So it feels slightly weird to be supporting Argentina, but we're doing it. Yeah, know? we are. We actually are. Because, like, you know... Well, we support them. We half support them. Obviously, if they're playing they England... They, we, we, we've done a bit of research on Argentina, obviously, and, and, they, uh, and the going kind of idea is that Half of them hate him and half of them love him. Yeah, so, so I support them, but they've had uh, two good wins um, against Ecuador and Bolivia, so they're sitting pretty in the qual. These are qualification games as well in South America, so they have a really different way of qualifying for the World Cup. They play, mm. basically have like a eight or nine, maybe ten team league that goes for ages. So they're and then top that. six or something, something like that, four, yeah. five, six, maybe. But it's it, very complicated. But Chile have had a bad start. They lost two one to Uruguay. Tough game. That, that is a tough game. And they drew two all with Colombia, which isn't a bad result to be fair. No, they're, they're two difficult teams. Exactly. So fingers crossed, Chile will um, pick it up. Argentina will be absolutely fine. It's not in qualifying you worry about Argentina. It's when they get to the tournament. Yeah, and you, you know playing Bolivia is a lot different to playing Uruguay or Colombia. Yeah, as well, they were at home Chile against Bolivia as well. Playing Bolivia away is incredibly hard. Oh, like, yeah, because the no stage exactly yeah. it's it's so high above um, sea level. So yeah, so those are good results for the Bielsa teams. Uh, obviously, none of the club teams have been playing, so as they were. Yeah, but yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for the roundup for this week. We're just praying that we can get back to church, Ellen Road, and Bielsa can start playing football again because exactly. these international breaks are tedious. They really are, and I'd much rather Calvin had two weeks with Bielsa than Gareth Southgate. I, 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 yeah, too right. I, I think we all. I think we all just support Calvin, don't we? That's it. Oh, that's how I watch England games at the mm. moment. I like, yeah. just support. Mate, Cal- I literally turned one of them off when he got subbed off. Yeah. I was just like, done. I, yeah, I did. I just like, just switch off. There's no Couldn't point. Care less. I do not want to see Declan Rice wandering around. Don't and care. I feel an, an immense amount of pride as well yeah. uh, when Mate, I watch him play. How, like, how good could it be, right? A midfield of Phillips at the back with Grealish and Foden in front of him and a front three of Sancho, Sterling and Kane. That's That's terrifying. Ailing bombing on. Oh man, we can we can but dream. <laughs> If you'd like to support us in our endeavours, then you can do by joining us on Patreon. Yeah, it's patreon.com forward slash the Bielsa Bible. If you sign up there, um, I am regularly putting up um, the full interviews. Like you will see in the sermon of this episode, if you've been watching before, you'll know what we're talking about. We have lo- we've done loads of interviews with people, amazing people like uh, comedians and journalists and players we're hopefully speaking to soon. Uh, yeah, we th- won't, will we be won't, happening. We, won't, uh, we we'll have some amazing stuff in the pipeline. Exactly. And- and I've been watching these interviews as, as you have, Rob, and it's just bloody good entertainment. We just talk yeah. about Bielsa, and I must say we've got really esteemed guests that are absolutely yeah. brilliant. So and you can see that you can view it for as little full, as three pound a month. Yeah, get the full interviews up there. So completely unedited. If you want a couple of hours of Bielsa chat, that's the place to go. Uh, we've got loads of stuff coming up there. You can get yourself some free merch and all that things as well. So that is bielsabible.com forward. No, sorry, that is not the right one. Patreon.com forward slash the Bielsa Bible. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Get on. And now, it's time for Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. Uh, so this week we have, uh, like, I think a clear, definitely deserved Saint of the Week. It's a little bit of a hard one to stomach in some ways. This week's Saint of the Week is going to be Marcus Rashford. Well done, Marcus. You, yeah. you transcend scum. This is it. We, you know, look, we have to put such things aside when it comes to the true spirit of Bielsism and what could be more uh, of a Bielsista move than for his tireless campaigning to help um, kids be fed. It's such a, a basic, yeah. wonderful thing for, he's done. For people that are watching outside England, we have a lot of... Uh, child poverty in England mm. at the moment. Uh, I know that's not unique to England, but mm. uh, and Great Britain uh, uh, as a whole. Yeah. And the government aren't really that interested in taking it too seriously. But one man 
turned the tide. That one man is centre of the week, Marcus Rashford, who's yeah. now is an MBE. He's been OBE, offered. OBE, I think. OBE, he's been yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he literally has, 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 has made the government do a U turn on this, yeah. and they are now funding uh, school meals for millions of children. Yeah, so it's that in means. the holidays, wasn't it? It's yeah, in the holidays. Literally the, the millions who... of kids are going to get fed now because of Marcus Rashford, which yeah. is just. Incredible. Because, yeah, these kids were basically they were on free school meals, so when they were at school, they were getting fed. And then in the holidays, you know, their you parents struggle. are really poor and they struggled. So yeah. yeah, he's campaigned for that and he's achieved it. And we just wanted to give him a set of the week nomination. Well, we wanted to give it to him because you know I think it's he deserves such it. An fully. Amazing thing he's done for all the praise. Really incredible. Amazing. And it's amazing to see how many people, the backlash to it as well. He's obviously getting a lot of credit for it, but the backlash to it. There's, a, there's is, backlash to like, anything. I know. How can you complain about someone who was who, I know. and and. Someone who comes from a, a, an economically deprived background, his mum mm. struggled financially when they was growing up, uh, but she's obviously did a fantastic job. Yeah, amazing. like he is, uh, he is the only credit to that awful club. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, vastly deserved. Well done, Marcus Rashford. Fantastic work. There we go. This week's Saint of the Week. Praise be Marcus. Saint of the Saint of the Week. So if you've been eyeing up our sweet, sweet merch, uh, you can get some for yourself at thebielsurvival.com forward slash shop. You can buy all sorts of different things. What we got, Mickey? We've got stickers. We've got mugs. That are, These are, we've had someone ask, these are big mugs. Yeah. There are got, smaller mugs, but why would you even bother? We've got two sizes of mug. Uh, this is the 15 ounce. 15 ounce. I know. That's like me on a weekend, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've got the t-shirts, high quality, ring oh, spun. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't take this off. You're going to see be wearing it every week because I wear it every day. It's my favourite T-shirt. It smells disgusting, but yours <laughs> will be clean when you ordered it. It's amazing. It's got a, it's the Bielsa Bible logo here on the back. It's a fantastic logo. Yeah, you can get yourself uh, cushions as well with the Lord's Prayer on the back. Of course, someone a... bought one. Someone well, bought one last week. Yeah, well, there you go. Good don't sound, purchase, su- that don't is. sound surprised. Yeah, uh, well, it's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's high quality. It is. We need to make sure gear. we put that in because it is very high quality yeah. and that is what Marcelo would want this is it we won't cut any corners because Marcelo wouldn't either so the bielsabible.com forward slash shop get yourself some treats go on you deserve it why not and now we move to today's sermon so without any further ado let us recite the lord's prayer our father who, who art, art from new wells Marcelo be thy name, name. Our king has come, thy will be done, on the pitch as it is in training. Give us each day our daily nutritionally balanced meal, and forgive us our bad passes, as we dispossess those who pass badly against us. Leeds' man-marking rotation has delivered us from EFL. For thine is the high line, the power, and the running. Forever and ever, vamos, Bielsa, carajo. Beautiful. Beautifully done. That, that though, is though. literally the first time we've done that in one take. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I've nailed that every time. It's usually you stumbling Shut up. up. Is it nutritional daily or what's going on here? Right, I'm going to relate. Bear in mind, I've got all the footage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but thou yeah, shalt not lie yeah that is a uh, commandment is, is a commandment but this is actually quite on topic that we're having this little confrontation <laughs> yeah literally mate this today's, is it's a great sermon today i'm excited about this one it's gonna be a lot of fun today's sermon is about fighting yeah like because we have this image i think a lot of the time especially in england because we see late era marcelo bielsa when he's it feels like he's made a soft him, little teddy bear exactly we see him as this cuddly nice wise man who's come to bestow kindness and generosity and honesty and he is all of those things but there is another side to marcelo bielsa who and he is at times unafraid to throw hands well uh, particularly in his, in his youth mm. uh, but as we dig deeper and deeper and delve into the bielsa story we have on earth some amazing stuff and this yeah. is part of it he is basically hard as fuck yeah he's There's absolutely, no other way of putting it he's nails he is absolutely nails. And, and not only that 
he is willing to prove it. Exactly. So we've been speaking to some people this week. We've been uh, asking them about this, and uh, we'll get into like one of the first uh, stories. We'll bring this up in a second. We've basically asked about. We found a few different fights through his life. Well, yeah. Well, do you know what? They came to us. They, yeah. they, we didn't go. Oh, as Marcelo, um, does he go around scrapping? Exactly. It's like, well, we we spoke to Tim Rich, who is. Uh, I'll, get a cop- I'll get the book. An off. official biographer of Bielsa. So he was paid to research there Bielsa. And if you've not got this, it's called the quality of madness yeah uh, it's it's a, it's a great um if you want more of a biographical overlook like it's not got all the nonsense of this podcast uh, no it's, literally if you want to know bielsa's life story this is it's in here it's the, great it's a great read and before we go into this as well right. i i bought this because you you tipped me off i went yeah. this book's come out a, a biography and i went oh great so i ordered it online managed to do it myself as yeah. well went on amazon and clicks the right things yeah. and it didn't disappear know, and, then, and then it turned up and i'm reading it and um i think i read it over about a week you know just yeah. a bit of a slow well, reader i text you do you remember <laughs> no, i was what? i was reading it and mickey's bloody in it I'm in the book <laughs> so like i text <laughs> him like he's like oh brilliant i didn't know there was a biography and then i'm reading it i'm like mickey you're in it <laughs> <laughs> and i remember that tim had interviewed me about a year a year prior to it and it all came flooding back it's like i'm reading away and i was like and like it mentions the bielsa bible like, uh, the, the bielsa bible. it mentions the bielsa raps and i'm like oh my god i think i was and then to an interview with mickey pika and i'm like what the, what <laughs> and it's so weird being in a book. <laughs> it's, and they, you're like, Whoa, I'm in the book. And then I start, and then it suddenly came back. We had a, we had a, uh, an interview near Round Day Park, and yeah. uh, he bought me a couple of pints. Really nice bloke. Yeah. Chatted away. And it was it was uh, it was after the pain of the. Um, of the derby defeat sure. and uh and it was such a weird feeling that, yeah. and i was buzzing i've made the bell biography so I, I i urge you to buy it and read it because it is brilliant yeah but tim, tim like i said has got a lot of authority on bell mm. because he, he went into very extensive research traveled to south america got really close with mm. uh with with Raphael as well, Bielsa's brother, who is a very intriguing character. Yeah, we'll be speaking about uh, Bielsa's family uh, definitely in a future episode because Tim especially gave us some really interesting stuff. An amazing but, family. Yeah, we, we this is we just spotted this theme from a couple of interviews we've done. Just these stories kept coming up <laughs> of Bielsa being handy. Yeah, and he, like so we'll we'll um, we'll play the first one. This is from Tim here telling us this story, and this is about uh, this is when he was at Marseille. Marseille, I believe, not too long ago as well. Yeah, actually, yeah. only uh, what what five or six years ago. This was. is it. He's with. Marseille, and he's got a translator, a guy called Oli yes, Ollie Zvesky, uh, who's a real sort of rock and roll type guy. And he he tells he tells Bielsa, you, you're a real Van Gogh type character. I mean, Bielsa, yeah, yeah, why do you say that? I said, because you're a genius in your work, but you're not exactly an easy person to get on with. And he also, um, Bielsa is bawling out, said, tells to Oli Zvesky, tell that guy, uh, midfielder, if he plays like that in training, if he continues to play like that in training, he's never playing for me again. And the translator said, I'm not doing that. I'm not sh-. I'm be able to say, oh, shout at him. And the translator said, I'm not shouting at him. You know, I'm just not. And he and Bielsen began having, ar- began having an argument, which Bielsen then threatens to, f- end- to have a fist fight with him. He said, let's, let us, let us settle this. He says, Bielsen said, let us settle this like gentlemen. And he just take his tracksuit off to sort of, you know, strip down, have a fight. <laughs> the translator makes it, we're not, we're not having a fist fight at the training ground. And I'll tell, you know. So, and and um, that's a strange thing about Beyonce. He's quite ready. He was quite ready, certainly in younger days, to settle things physically. <laughs> um, and, and certainly when he's coaching at the University of Buenos Aires, he said, you know, he said to another, to, you know, to a, a, one of his players, he said, right, we'll step outside, Mr. Deval, and we will settle this properly. <laughs> I absolutely love that he fights like that as well. It's how he'd expect, isn't it? <laughs> Queensbury yeah. rules. It's his unzapping his, unzipping his tracksuit. So it's just oh, like, no. let's just settle this like gentlemen. Pistols at dawn. I absolutely love oh, it. It's so amazing. He even fights in a Bielsa way. Yeah. If, he would never just attack uh, without, never. W- without um, you know, telling telling his opposition that he's about to do so. It's 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 equal. It's got to be equal. Yeah. On, and so yeah, but the surprise attack of like, you know, quick brick in the face, that's not bielsa style no you're not getting glassed by bielsa no certainly not but you are definitely getting offered out yeah i i love that the way this fight started because 
for a start, it must be really frustrating if you're speaking through a translator yeah. and you're angry. Yeah, and you fall down. And the translator's like going, he's like, ah! Jonathan's going, could you please do that a little bit better? Exactly. Yeah. He's it's... not communicating. Shout at him. Translate my <laughs> God, don't leave me but alone. Surely the player would get the message, though. If Bielsa's speaking in a language he doesn't understand, shouting yeah. at him, and then a translator goes, you have played awfully. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd surely work out that, that what furious. you perhaps could do better is what he's saying there. Yeah. No so, way, man. That is brilliant. And then, obviously, uh, Salim Ran, uh, Lamrani was the next um, translator to come in. And he's mm. like, why, why, why have you got the job? Well, someone else was... Uh, someone else, well, he offered him out, I'm going to say that. The, the, <laughs> the last one there, he, 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 won, he wasn't prepared to fight it out. And he left. Yeah, this is it. It's like, I, I wonder if Bielsa would keep working with you if, after a fist fight. Perhaps. I think if it was settled. Um, yeah. it was Once it was done. Once, once it two done. gentlemen have settled something physically, <laughs> then they can have a bit more respect for each other yeah. and you can move on. The yeah. winner of the fight is obviously the winner of the argument yeah you're, you're now the manager if yeah. you beat Bielsa in a fight <laughs> yeah he's offered quite a lot of people out over the years it there's seems. a few I mean like um yeah th this is the thing like he is very insistent on his place in the hierarchy I think yeah. that's important oh, thing. Yeah. he is always insistent he is the boss what he says goes and he's god he's gotta be so we've got a really interesting perspective on this from um alright I need to get his surname right we should have asked him when we were speaking to him it's Mariano it's Mariano uh, but his surname is uh humanic i think um i can't uh, read it but i can't say it i apologize we're awful at translation we, we know are and, and mariano is actually an expert in translation yeah <laughs> he's, like, a, he's a new elders fan um, a really passionate and like encyclopedic this was such an amazing conversation wow we, we spoke to mariano for two hours and we're not done we're two hours 17 him. minutes it was actually I think. we're gonna speak to him again he's brilliant his passion for bielsa is incredible mm. he's a very learned man he works at university yeah very into his uh philosophy he's got a, a some real um bielsa traits to him which is lovely he and has actually he had this to say about um bielsa making his mark on the hierarchy and putting his uh, position into place mm. uh, for bielsa uh traditionally he told uh managers and teams i gotta make more money than your highest earning uh player because so they gotta respect me that's based on that. That's interesting, yeah. yeah that is interesting. We have he's, talked he's about that. He's on big contracts. He's on big contracts. That says a lot about Bielsa. That that says, wow. I mean, when when we're trying to bring the likes of DePaul in, um, and you're wondering what are his wages going to be, you know? And then, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, mate, yeah, you know, yeah. So clearly, you know, that's no longer the case that he can earn thirty five million uh, yeah. pounds, right? But it used to be the case back in the day that he would demand to be paid more than the highest earning player. Hmm. as a token of the the pecking order sure okay you got to know who's who okay so authority is important and in fact when money was not possible as a definer of that he would say okay th that's your position this is my position you were the captain of the team you disagree with me we've talked about this it has come the time to go to blows because Okay, we are not understanding each other. So we're going to go to fisticuffs here. And he used to do that too. So uh, can we just say what an amazing use of the word fisticuffs there? Yeah, from his second language. Is his second language fisticuffs? Brilliant word. But yeah, I it, just, it lives on the East Coast of America yeah, now, to be fair. So he's, uh, he's cheating. Yeah. But no, like, it was it's so great that. I that love point, it. I just, it, it, throughout his career, it seems that Bielsa, if he's had a problem, mm. he's just offered you out. That yeah, is, is that, is, that's why perhaps he's, he's chosen football as his li of his line of work because he's got this fire inside him. Yeah, and if you like uh, his his family, are, uh, politicians, a lot of them um, high up in government office mm -hmm. as well. You're talking housing ministers, his sister, I think. Yeah, and if Bielsa had chosen um uh, a career in politics and something had gone wrong it'd be, it a, bit, just... it'd be a bit john prescott <laughs> wouldn't yeah, he might, yeah it would literally well it'd be, at least john was provoked physically sure. i've got a feeling bielsa would just be uh you know straight yeah. across the room knocking out boris knocking johnson knocking out knocking out the, the front bench of the opposition uh, like totally and that's it like it, there is that uh gentlemanly thing to it and uh i don't know if we're going to start taking it on when we have disagreements about the podcast no if you've got a new feature idea i don't yeah. like do well, i have to bang you this out like now? gentleman just <laughs> top off I, I was, I'd, I'd take off the holy t-shirt mate <laughs> it's the only thing that would get it off well that's it that is what it is with bielsa it's like right we need to settle this we've exhausted all other ways there is so, no the only avenue to walk down is physicality yeah i mean there is um one of the i think like the most iconic bielsa stories and one that I, I didn't even to be honest i thought this might be like an apocryphal tale until we spoke to tim rich 
and it's well we'll let him tell the story we'll uh, discuss it in a second this this one you, if you're a blc star i'm sure you've heard this it's such an incredible tale though That's brilliant there is a story about i mean he, he's my face breakdown comes when against he, he, they play san lorenzo newest play san lorenzo and in the copa libertadores which is equivalent to the champions league they've won the argentinian league they're now in the you know, equivalent of the Champions League in their first game, he's against another Argentinian team from, from Buenos Aires called San Lorenzo. It's at home at the Coros de Parque, which is now the Bielsa Stadium. And they lose their first game 6 0. The first game was 6 0 at home. That is a game where the fans congregate around Bielsa's house and he comes out with a hand grenade. Or what he says is a hand grenade and says, If you do not disperse, I am going to throw this hand grenade. And you know, they do disperse as you would. <laughs> but then he goes, but then they, but then their next game is in San, is in the Santa Fe, which is n- the nearest big city to Rosario. And he has a breakdown and he locks himself in his hotel room for um days, several couple of days or whatever. And he then goes to he then uh, goes to see Griffa, who's his big mentor at um, uh, Renewals, and says, I'm black, I've had enough, I can't do this anymore. And Griffa basically says, you go back to Santa Fe and you manage the team. And he manages the team, they draw, they don't lose, whatever. But yeah, like, yeah something of a breakdown. Hello, isn't it? Like, I just, he, that story is it, true. He came out with a hand grenade. Or at least what he said was one, which is basically the same thing in practice. You know, I mean, like, if just, you, there's no other manager in the in world history that's <laughs> ever done that. Not many people have ever done that. Can you imagine Roy Hodgson coming out with a hand grenade? <laughs> or like, if you don't get back, <laughs> I'm going to throw this hand grenade at you. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be able to throw it past his bloody doorstep, would he, Roy? He ended up blowing his own front door off. It's such a funny reaction. Like, uh, do you know what, though? Bielsa plans everything meticulously. I don't I know think, if he planned that. I, no, I think is, potentially has he gone, I'm the manager at New Wells. He's got, um, he's got some ultras, as every Argentinian club does, very passionate fans. And do you think he thought, do you know what? I might get a few I might get a few people come up to my door. So he's got a gun, a little box, there's a few people. What if I get a crowd? Open the hand grenade box. Why has <laughs> he got a box of grenades for a start? Because of course he has. Of course he's got a box of grenades. I mean, it's Bielsa. There are a lot of questions, like why does he have a grenade if he does? But I, I think he would prepare. Like I say, look, I might, there might be a few people that come to my house. I've got children. I've got to protect my family. I'm going to buy some hand grenades. Look, I know, I know Argentina, Argentina was tasty at times, but like, I've heard of people having like a baseball bat by the door or yeah. something. A hand grenade hand is Hand grenade under level. the bed. Although like, I like the idea- I'm taking it down with me. I like the idea that he was pretending as well. I like that, the idea, yeah, just an egg. Just from the- Yeah, yeah, he's come out with a sweet potato <laughs> in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't move, just paint it green. And You're just... going to get so much good protein. <laughs> Could be a sweet potato, could be a hand grenade. You make the choice. <laughs> Do you feel lucky? <laughs> you feel lucky. <laughs> well, yeah, it's amazing. And, and just look- bites the top off it. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious, that. <laughs> That's it. Like, it's, uh, look, it is a way to get a crowd to go away. Yeah, get a hand grenade. And it worked. I mean, that, that, l- l- wait, it leads with a 10,000 strong, you know, with the, with the promotion party. What, that, cr- we took square. ages to disperse. Right. If the crowd, if one police officer just threw a hand grenade on the floor. <laughs> you wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> the amount of fireworks No, we wouldn't give a shit. The amount of smoke anyway. Yeah, it would have been brilliant. Oh, uh, yeah. So like, that is obviously such an iconic story. And like, I just didn't know it was real. I thought it was one of those that maybe was, you know, like sort of more the legend. But it's it gone down like, in folklore. It seems like it is actually, and it's it, the truth. It, it's it actually genuinely happened. true. And yeah, like it's, the sort of thing that just makes you love him even more. Can you imagine it? the respect those fans must have had for him as they were walking away, Mate. just going, my God, we have got someone special here. I'll tell you what, if Steve Evans had come out with a hand grenade rather than a sombrero... Yeah, we might have had a bit of respect <laughs> for yeah, him. Yeah, might have done. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, it. this is a thing, like, he is, when he is backed into a corner and he feels like there's no other option, he's like, okay, 
it's why we are. It, it's, 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 fighting flight, time. it's flight or fight. That's what they say. And, and he ain't has, flying anywhere. There, there has never been one flight in Marcelo Bielsa's career that, unless it was a plane. Well, no, this is it though. He will not back down to anyone. He will and fight. He will stand and fight. And that's what we're learning from the, this yeah. religion is that if you, you got a problem, you fight. Well, I think this leads on perfectly to him never backing down, no matter how scary the situation is. Look at this for an example of a situation that anyone would run away from but not Marcelo. Not God. Also, there's another instance uh, in 1976, 77, when he went to play in Cordoba, another team out of, when he did not make it in <coughs> New York, but he went to another city. And again, a lot of people from the ultras came to put pressure on the team. He said, guys, let me handle this. Okay, you, one by one, you and me. Okay, come just don't come at once. One by one, I'll take you all. <laughs> one by one, I'll take you all. Such a hard not move, isn't it? It's amazing. He, he is literally a hero to us, isn't he? Before yeah. this, before we started he's doing this podcast, he's also turns out he's like Rambo. Oh, no, it's just, just, I'll have all of you. And just like, one by. Can you imagine just standing behind him, protect me, Marcelo? <laughs> oh, mate, I would, I would definitely. But like, you've got, we've got to put this in context. When we're talking about ultras mm. here, like, in case anyone doesn't know what that means, that is like the most hardcore <laughs> of the most hardcore fans, and we're we're talking about. Argentinian ultras in like the 70s yeah we are not talking about people to be trifled with we are no. talking about some seriously scary dudes we learned from Mariano actually that uh, away fans are banned now in Argentina yeah, and it's it been like that so for about intense. 30 years because there's quite a lot of murders yeah so these so people do not mess around and Bielsa knew that and he's more than willing to stand up to them all all one by one on, on, his, on, his, on his own and like you know with Bielsa when he says something he means it yeah he's not just fronting there he will have those fights yeah how many do you reckon he'd get through before he lost one. Oh, I reckon he probably got through three or four. Are they all just fucked off? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like, this guy's incredible. Once you've battered the first couple, the rest don't fancy it as no, much. No, all you got to do is walk up to say, which is the hardest one? Right, yeah. I'll fight you then. Although we're saying this a lot. Like I I, am... I don't look like I'm very good at fighting yeah. and I can honestly say that I look harder than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same man. I'm dead big, but I'm really uncoordinated. Oh God. Have you ever had, uh, have had any scraps? Well, yeah, I've been in quite a lot of fights, right? Yeah. I, I'm not, have I'm, well, I'm not one to start a fight but i was always one but you'll finish it no right. no no i would I, I was i was Bite the sweet dragged, potato. In, <laughs> dragged into a lot of them and uh yeah well dragged in what's that sort of like? Well, like, i've been battered uh, come in i would be in places where fights would occur or i wouldn't want anything any you know and someone would start because i'm very tall I yeah think people want to pick on the big lad they do so, but, like, i'm really look right I, and I, I i have been yeah i used to work in a really rough pub right so like it would kick off all the time and like yeah, I, d I never did well in the fight, so I always try and stop him. Like, the, the most... <laughs> this is so bad. Just like, get in this fight. Okay, guys, let's try and... Guys, <laughs> can we talk this out? Talk this right. out. So what happened was, right, I'm from a little town in... Hands like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm from a little town in North Yorkshire called Nairsbury, right? And every year we have an event called the Bed Race. I can't really go into what... It, it's like a weird little town event. We push uh, sort of beds around the town for okay. the race. Basically, the Sounds point weird is, as fuck. It's we'll proper weird, but it's a great day. And like the, the important thing to know is that all the people who live in the town are bored of the event. And now it's just a massive piss up. Right? Yeah. Everyone gets crazy hammered like I, this is the drunkest place i have ever seen is nairsborough on bed race day people start at 9 a.m and they just go hammered all day so i was working in this bar which was like always the place where fights kicked off in the town because it was open till 3 a.m and nowhere else was so i was working on the bar and i'd been out at bed race all day so i'm hammered and it was a fancy dress theme every year this year was um british rock stars so i was dressed as freddie mercury in the i want to break free video <laughs> if you're gonna fight fancy dress fighting is definitely this the best way to go about so it i've got a little leather skirt <laughs> I've got um, fishnet stockings. I've got fake boobs and a Hoover? mustache. No, I couldn't. Have... That'd be quite handy to fight, wouldn't it? it? Would have been. But yeah. yeah, so I'm behind. A Henry it. just sucking the nose off. <laughs> <laughs> Can a Henry in the face? Wield it like yeah. a mace, a Henry. Uh, but yeah, like so, this fight kicks off, and it was like full on, like a uh, wild west, like the piano stops playing, sort of <laughs> yeah. like you know, cloud of dust with hands and fists coming out. It was the biggest fight I've ever seen because the pub is rammed. It's yeah. like nine deep at the bar, and every corner is full. It's, it's like a tornado sucking everybody into yeah. it and it's increasing. And you've got the mixture of tourists and people from this northern town. And, you know, so it kicks off, right? And the whole pub is fighting. It is just 
chaos. And because I'm hammered, right, I'm like, I'm going to sort this out. Yeah. I'm the guy who needs to sort yeah. this. So, and like, I swear to God, this is true. You can ask people in my hometown about this. They all still talk about it. I vaulted the bar. I thought, I thought you were going to stand at the bar and go, beep, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the scat man. That's the scat man. <laughs> hey, oh. Yeah, Everyone yeah. just stops. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I, and it starts fighting again <laughs> I, I vaulted the bar it was like a clean wow, vault so that's I, cool already yeah it, mate it's the coolest thing I've ever done in my wow, entire I'm, life I'm pretty impressed forget the that. fact that I flashed everyone on my dick as my leather <laughs> skirt, skirt flew on. over so yeah I, I'd vault the bar right m- m- push over my legs over and I land right and I'm amazed I've done it like yeah. it's one of those where it's like I attempted it and I'm wow. like that's yeah. actually worked but as soon as my feet hit the ground from this amazing graceful vault it's genuinely the most athletic thing I have ever done in well my life done, mate. my feet hit the ground and i immediately got punched in the face <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got a plan to the punch in the face this is it man my feet hit the ground i got punched in the face i ended up getting punched by five different people okay. including two women yeah one of them was we dressed as a woman so exactly so you know they got involved i was because uh, at one point i was trying to drag someone out who just hit someone right so i feel like got them uh like it's sort of like a full nelson from behind grabbing them so after you were being hit you went to get still other... carried in mate yeah. i'm hammered you got to bear yeah. in mind i'm hammered Fair right, i'm not feeling things that much yeah so i dr- I got to drag this guy out and her uh, his girlfriend then hit me in the face yeah why, why wouldn't full you? on chin me uh, and like the bouncers were watching this happen because one of them had gone to move his car and the other one's like <laughs> i'm not legally allowed to get involved without my partner so he was <laughs> just a, stood a really handy excuse so he was stood where you are watching me repeatedly be hit in the face while i'm dressed as a woman <laughs> We ended up having to shut the bar at 9 pm. It was over. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying did about you get any, ending did up you, in fights. Did you land any blows? Well, no, I'm not punching. I'm trying no, to stop yeah. the fight. Yeah. You know? And also, I don't throw that good a punch. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> my, uh, mate, my mate plans ride it out, take the hits. So, yeah, I wasn't. it wasn't quite the uh, Bielsa y gentlemanly fight. How about you? Have you been in any scraps? I've been in a few, yeah, but they never went well. <laughs> yes. I, the, the, the last one I was in was was prop that I can remember. Um, I've been that few... I can remember is a very important yeah there's been a lot of, I'm, I'm quite hedonistic I said it was in my younger days so there's a lot of like blank outs but uh, <laughs> you've woken up with a few black eyes that you can't explain <laughs> yeah, well, this happened but I remember one time my uh, it's never me I'm not I'm not a, a confrontational person I, no. I, I, I get around that by being nice yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm not someone you want to hit really I think well I hope I hope not but my mates are often, often dickheads because uh, I love dickheads <laughs> that's why we do this podcast together hey, cheers mate yeah. and we um <laughs> And I remember this, we were at uni and um, Scouse, he was obviously from Liverpool, but he insisted on being called Scouse. And he's still one of my best mates today. He's an absolute top lad. And he, uh, he kicked this taxi driver's door, right? And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and uh, this taxi driver's like, gets out and he's like, you know, giving it to someone that. And then and, and Scouse is like, fuck off. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, fuck off. And we walked back to Headingley from town in Leeds, which is about three miles. It's a fair trek. Yeah, it is. Because that's where Scouse was staying at the time. We were pissed up two in the morning, three in the morning thing. And this taxi driver's followed us all the way home and as soon as we got off this uh, side street that was like kind of dimly lit and some mm. trees me and him were walking there zigzagging pissed up and i just heard this this footsteps this car door shut he's obviously got some mates involved and uh, i just heard this like like this 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 like low and i kind of like stopped somewhere and that's the last thing i remember and then <laughs> i woke up don't know how long i don't know how you know how, how many hours or minutes it was i woke up with next to the curb like that i went oh uh, and Scouse was like, mate, mate, come here, come here. Look, I've been knocked out. And I went, oh my God, you okay? He had blood coming out of his nose. And I was like, mate, are you all right? And then I went, hold on, I've just been knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> So that was a fight I had. Uh, in fact, I remember I was having a piss. That was it. I, I'd stopped. I was having a piss. I just got. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I had my dick out or not, but that would have been real. It might have zipped up for me and just gone, oh, come on, mate. You end up on a register because you've yeah. been knocked out on a night out. Yeah. And another one was when I was younger. I remember um, it was again, it's just hanging around with bigger boys who were a bit more violent. And yeah. uh, we, we had this like gang warfare well, it's same, going it's on. Same as me. Like comedians, we're always the funny one in the group. You know, yeah. so like we've got like hard mates and we're the funny one around just, them. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just just getting i was about 15 just getting pissed up you know what i mean like you know, like you do when you can in then, britain and we, we and my mates wanted to go and start on this lad so we went over and I, I was just hanging on the edge you know what i mean there was loads mm. and, and this lad was a bit older than us and then we went to his house for some reason i don't know why there wasn't really hated him and then he called some mates and about six cars turned up right of bigger boys 
right? And we were about 15 and they were about 18, 19, 20 and yeah. they were very a lot bigger and we all just went, oh shit. <laughs> and we all dispersed and I, I was well pissed off and I was on the edge of it. I wasn't even involved and I remember thinking, oh fuck. And I, and I started panicking and, and I got really unlucky because one of the, like, three of the cars pulled up and I ran into a fence. <laughs> I was panicking like fuck. I ran into a fence. They were in hot pursuit, right? So as soon as I hit the fence, I got grabbed, dragged down to the floor. And I remember I, I just saw three pairs of boots, right? And that's all I could see. And they started kicking, laying into me. And I was like, and I, I remember after about, honestly, after about 10 seconds going, I'm fucking doing all right here. It, it wasn't hurting that much. And I was going, oh, oh, ah, yeah. and trying to make, try, and then I remember this boot going like this. It went like that. And then I remember it going like that, and it hit me right above the eye. And I went, oh, like that. And then his mate went, I think he's had enough now. And he, he was the one that took his top off. He, he just got out of his car, took his top off, and started running at me. <laughs> wow. It was, bro, that, so that's my really my experience of fighting. I'm not a very good fighter. That, I, I admire people that can fight, though. Well, it's yeah, not because it's, it's, it's not something I'm good at. It's certainly a skill. It's, it's one to be used uh, wisely. Obviously, like, we're both in situations there that weren't fair or just. No. We were, do, you you have, do you ever have... Um, um, you know, you have like an argument with someone, or mm. or something happens. Do you ever have a psychological fight with them, where you pretend to beat them up in your own mind? Oh yeah, that's how all of my fights go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but mine are always like, say something. Like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. He's, yo, look, you get, God. you get me in a verbal confrontation, I will end your, I will end your world. Yeah, but like if we start throwing hands, I'm, no. I can really take a punch though. I can really take one. Yeah, but, I, I, uh, I bruise quite easily though. <laughs> I, I, I'm all right. I, I've took a few punches and stood there. Yeah. And, uh, and and not gone down and gone. That was all right, but that um, you know, just a little clip. And you, but then I bruise the next day. I'm, it's literally oh god, I, I'm like a girl. My hands are so soft. I've got honestly, I've got the softest hands. <laughs> so soft, honestly. You've never skin, done a day of proper work. They haven't. It? My skin is really soft. I saw that when I used to go out there courting girls. I'd always say, just feel my hand, and they go, "Oh my god!" I go, "It's so soft, isn't it?" They go, "Yeah." <laughs> that's mickey's move and that is literally how i, I get them to touch my hand <laughs> <laughs> top tips there from me uh but yeah like we, we've definitely not followed in the bielsa vein of no. uh, like honorable we fights. need to do better we need to get a fight this is like fight club your homework hey. now blc is, is go and take your tracksuit top off and ask someone if they would like to settle this like gentleman uh that is not the views of this podcast no it's not is no, it we are joking like obviously it is very much in a in a last chance solution sort of situation and i don't know if bielsa would fully um i don't know if he's fully proud of these incidents as well i, I don't mean, know because it's, it's something he's continued doing yeah it's, 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 can you imagine bielsa as a, as a wrestling character <laughs> Who is it? Here he is, El Loco. God, God, JR. It's El Loco with the hand grenade. He's come, now he's come up with a bucket, wouldn't he? A bucket with a hand grenade in it, and, and it lips on the floor. Everyone's like, oh, and smashed it into people's faces. It's ste- I know, he'd have his glasses on. He's like steely and walking with that f- focused determination towards the ring. What music would he have, do you think? Oh, I don't know. He'd have our theme tune. He likes tango. Oh, yeah, he'd probably have, yeah, like, yeah. I like, don't even know what tango goes I like. I don't know. We'll have a little Argentinian. Yeah, no, do, like, do, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. It, it just, I, I, so it, it'd stroll out, would he? It'd stroll out like when he's yeah. doing his. Um, no fireworks, nothing. No, none of that. no, no, no. He's just in the ring, yeah. hand grenade at the ready. Really understated. Let's go. He'd probably be reading stuff as well, like just reading or watching videos of football, then throws it all away, gets in the ring, and he'd just unleash hell, wouldn't he? But or like, maybe you'd ask on the microphone, let's settle this, like, gentlemen. <laughs> 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 the, the, El Loco the gentleman There is always a reason behind it There is always some provocation He's not someone who's looking for it I don't think I think it's uh, Absolutely that not happens. And yeah. I think like there is a he, 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 He's got a strong sense of justice Yes uh, Yes that we, is we exactly have to remember it. that And sometimes You know Sometimes you've You've got to Come to blows To, to win the, To win Well To win justice It's his last resort And like here's a perfect example of it That Mariano told us about This is like another Different separate fight <laughs> So many fights. So, so here's one that happened uh, when man. he was at Bilbao. So in Bilbao, he was pushing once again for the expansion and the modernizing of the training grounds. And he noticed that somebody had done a very, very poor job, the person who had been hired. Um, and nobody in the club, he noticed, was putting any pressure and demanding uh, that this be done better. 
So he took it upon himself to confront this contractor. And he said, this is a terrible job. It's horrible. And the other guy said, no, it's good. No, it's not. It's very bad. And they, they started becoming very agitated. And they, they went to blows. Okay. So the other guy, the contractor said, okay, I am going to, um, I'm going to accuse you before the law because you have uh, abused me, you have uh, assaulted me. So after a couple of days, uh, a week went by, he never received any summons from anybody, uh, Marcelo. So he went to the police station himself. He found out that the team had put some pressure on the guy not to uh, make any accusations. And so he went to the police station himself and said, I want to accuse myself because um, I went to blows with this person who claims to have been assaulted. And uh, yep, why did he do that? Yeah. Again, we're talking about the the social aspects, uh, the human aspects of who he is. He understands that before the law in this society of spectacle, some people are considered to have a higher <laughs> status than others. And he still thinks himself to be equals to anybody. And that's what he demands of the players. You guys are equals. Don't you forget it. And I'm an equal. So I'm going to accuse myself because you don't have the social stature to accuse me. Isn't that such a beautiful perspective on it? Because I've always interpreted that story. I'd heard it before, obviously, about yeah. the contractor. But I had always interpreted that uh, that act of Bielsa turning himself in as an act of honesty, and uh, think you know uh, is of that... pure honesty, which which Bielsa it is subscribes to, um, and it's a, but it's too easy to think that. Yeah, it's really like Mariano's. Um, like I think that's so spot on and so interesting that perspective on it that it's because it's not equal and not fair. If he has a football club behind him that other people don't have but he's done the same thing he deserves the same punishment is yeah. how he sees it he yeah. is that and that's what's so beautiful about bielsa isn't it like we we, we love to it really you know, is it's... we're all equal before the law and, yeah. and he'd been given an advantage then and he wanted to make sure that that advantage was taken away yeah and that's how he's lived his entire life because he has been born into aristocracy he certainly has but he lives his life in such a humble way and sees himself so sincerely as equal to everyone else it's not an act it's not virtue signaling it's nothing like that he believes it and he lives it and that is a perfect example of it because anyone else look if i get away with something i ain't going to the police i'm not being a grass when someone else does something and gets away with it let alone me so it, that is such a high standard of morality it really is and yeah. it's something we could all learn from and, and aspire to but really in practice would you do it i mean it, we've all got away with things before but yeah. marcelo is not he's not going to let that go he, he doesn't want to get away with it he wants mm. things to be fair yeah there's completely. a huge sense of fairness and i think with his fights that he's he's had throughout his life it's also about taking it into your own hands mm. don't let someone else deal with it. that's what he's trying to teach us here is especially with the building contract it's not the manager's job to ensure that this this building, this facility is done to a correct standard. He's got mm. a football team to think about, yeah. but he takes the responsibility. We've talked about this in previous episodes. It's Bielsa that takes responsibility. I'm going to deal with this. He goes up to the building contractor. He offers him out. <laughs> of course he does. Uh, they come to blows. Don't know who won the fight, but it sounds like it was Bielsa. It sounds the... like Bielsa wins because like the, the contractor's the one wanting to press charges. Yeah. And, like, and, and then Bielsa's, like I say, he's he has to go to the police to if he didn't go to the police and give himself in he wouldn't have his own religion would he he wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't these, be this godlike character that we, we we perceive him as being these are the actions that separate him but they really are this yeah. is why we're doing a podcast thing because he's he's uh, of elevated status there can be no doubt totally and there's a lot to, look we've this has been a really fun one but there is a lot to learn from it like what would you say the lesson is today i'd say the lesson is if if someone strikes you on the cheek, you should offer the other cheek, swivel on your hips, unleash hell with all your fists, and then offer out every single one of his mates. <laughs> I think that's a perfect way to put it. That's, <laughs> that's the prayer. That's what we can learn from Bielsa today. I think I think strength. You've got to be strong. Yeah. Bielsa's been strong all his life. Uh, he's come from, you know, like I say, opulence, and he could have had anything he wanted, and he could have sat there, and it, it all comes to him, but he's gone out and on his own and proved himself physically within uh, a football team. People talk about Bielsa's playing days. Mm. Uh, I read a lovely article today. He played for Argentina 
Argentinian under twenties, I think. Yeah, I mean, to play for your national to team, to be any sort of professional is, footballer yeah. is an incredible level of talent. If and you play, he in, went and made it there in yeah. the world of professional football. He doesn't have any people in his family that are footballers. Mm. He's gone out and done it and proven himself All on, by himself. on the pitch, and he's and he's and he's been proving himself off the pitch ever since he walked out of his mum and dad's house at sixteen and went to live on his own. <laughs> And we close the episode out, as we always do. We, we like to try and delve into the past of Bielsa, and sometimes we get to find some texts that other people haven't got. Not even people like Tim Rich, the official biographer. We found some texts from the secret pages of the Bielsa Bible that only we have access to. Mickey, you've got another one of these parables for us today, haven't you? <sighs> Unearthing this was a real gem. Mm. Wow. I mean, it's the vanquishing of the devil. Oh, this sounds like a very important parable today. And this again is uh is it's not ancient text uh it's actually quite recent oh is it uh but very uh, a very unknown story or little known story that i'm hoping now will I, I can speak the truth and we can get it out there and and it's about it, this is about finding the truth isn't it this podcast always let us begin as bielsa was walking through the west end at ellen road shortly after his catastrophic kiko casilla crafty capitulation to derby county he noticed Fraud Lampard in the corridor, celebrating wildly like the little satanic child he is. Immediately, God congratulated him for his unholy victory and attempted to shake his hand, but the devil Lampard was having none of it. You stupid argy prick, ah, you wanker, get in! I smashed you like a smashed Christian on a yacht, fuck off! And in saying this, he threw a lit cigarette at God, striking him on the chest and burning a small hole in his legionated tracksuit. God was incensed that the holy tracksuit had been tarnished and responded with the holy words, We shall settle this like gentlemen. But first, I must ask that that child leave. I'm not a fucking child, screamed Jody Morris as he hurtled towards Bielsa, <laughs> throwing his fists in all directions and screaming like a tiny child. God stood still and slowly unzipped his tracksuit top, his eyes fixed on the devil as Jody Morris struck him with all his might, hitting God just below the knee. Without even looking at Jody, God placed his jacket on top of him like a coat stand and little Morris danced his way to the floor. What's going on? Who turned out the lights? Becoming more and more entangled in the holy tracksuit with every twist and turn. Morris, you fucking mag! We were supposed to take him at the same time! Screamed Lampard, his voice revealing a panic-stricken tone. Purposefully, Bielsa strode towards his target as Fat Frank cowered into the changing rooms. He reverted to his old devil tricks by lying to everyone and throwing money at the problem. As he frantically tossed fifty pound notes into the air, God grabbed him firmly and the devil and the devil let out a piercing shrill. Without hesitation, the Lord struck him four times in the stomach, shouting three, three, one, three, as he did so. <laughs> As Fraud <laughs> Lampard lay crestfallen on the floor, struggling to breathe, Bielsa turned to the entire Derby first team squad and said, If anyone here recognises this man as a friend, then I will fight you now. An eerie silence befell the room as all eyes met the floor. It was broken by the footsteps of Jody Morris as he handed God his jacket back and apologised. Thanks for not twatting me. You won't hear a peep from them because everyone fucking hates the West Ham cant. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Very well, said he who is mighty and glorious. <laughs> and with that, he walked calmly towards the door, safe in the knowledge that there would only be internal bruising. <laughs> As he strode out of the away changing room at Ellen Road, he heard Jody Morris scream one last time. I don't believe it! He's only gonna fucking shat himself! <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friend, is the truth behind that infamous turd at Ellen Road. It wasn't the Derby County players. It was indeed the devil, Frank Lampard, turning on his players again and leaving a shitstorm.
<laughs> this has been the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm struggling. It's fine. It's the truth. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, had, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard that story before. Yeah, it's we little recorded. known. Like I said, it's yeah. little known, but now we know the truth. Well, thank you for bringing us that, Mickey. Absolutely no problem. Amazing. Well, I hope you've got another parable for us next week. They're absolutely incredible. Well, it depends what I can find. Yeah, I'm just going fun. through trying to find holy texts, and and things are popping out. Yeah, so fantastic. We'll have another delve uh, next time. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and all your contributions. This has been a load of fun, this episode. We hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, Not it, too serious at times, but, but an, an important message though. An Stand and fight, my BLC yeah. friends. Stand and fight. And we'll, we'll do our best to defend BLC as well if anyone should uh, attempt to... Uh, Besmirch his good name. I think that's a really good way of putting it. And exactly. I, I believe there's only three words left. Well, uh, there's a couple, because I'm going to tell people to sign up to our Patreon first. Oh, well, I'm wrong then. You are wrong. Uh, the Bielsa Bar- Let's settle this like gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Go to patreon.com forward slash The Bielsa Bible if you want to support us on there and get some more extra stuff. And also you can buy merch at thebielsabible.com forward slash shop. But yes, now let's do it, Mickey. Those three final words. All that remains to say is... Vamos, Bielsa, carajo. Bielsa, Bielsa.